morning everybody welcome to Malibu uh, today I've got a Tesla Model X P90D uh, this one's actually not from Tesla I got it from Turo Turo is sort of like the uh, Airbnb for cars so you can rent someone's car for their personal car you can rent out your own car and in fact the gentleman who owns this particular Model X has uh, an M4 and an M5 he also rents on Turo so you can kind of make a business out of it which is cool so Model X 90D, uh, this one does not have ludicrous mode. It has the second biggest battery pack. There's a 100D now, which is even more power and even more range, but uh, 90D is pretty good. This thing is uh, is quick. Uh, it's about 140 grand, it's, it's not cheap. And uh, this one also has the air suspension, the nice big uh, black wheels, a crazy black and white interior. It's like uh, belly in here or something. <laughs> um, but, uh, but it drives cool. Um, what is really, uh, interesting about this car, like what I said with the model S was I kind of wanted a little less chotch and a little more kind of solidity and, and, and quality and, uh, and the, the fine things. And so there's a few things about this car that kind of drive me nuts. For instance, uh, the, the door handles, which look like they should line up perfectly on the passenger side, don't. And I looked at a bunch of other Model Xs uh, in a parking lot, because they're all over LA, and a bunch of them were like that too. Um, there's also some like squeaks and rattles in here, as you'll see uh, uh, as I go for a drive, which is weird for a brand new car. Um, so that being said, oh, also I can't open the Falcon doors in my garage. My DeLorean wasn't a problem because that car's low, but this thing is like as tall as a Tacoma. And then if you add gull wing doors, like nobody can get in the back seat in my garage. So I don't really understand the point of that one. Uh, so as far as our settings, we're gonna go into insane mode, no ludicrous mode on this one. And uh, for suspension, I'm, I'm low right now. I'm gonna switch to very high just so I can get off this nasty looking curb. The air suspension goes quick, which I uh, which I like. It's a quick acting. There we go, and we're gonna go back to standard to drive. All right, well let's uh, let's have a drive down this road. I don't know if you can see it in that shot, but as I've learned, uh, Tesla's GPS is based on cell phone signal, and uh, when you lose cell phone signal, you lose GPS, which is uh, which is not good uh, because your car's GPS is supposed to help you when you lose cell phone signal. That's how all the other ones work. I don't know why this one can't be like that. Uh, this thing is, uh, it's big and it's heavy, but uh, with all the electric torque, with the very low center of gravity, with the battery packs and the floor, uh, it gets around a corner pretty good. The steering is a bit, you know, video gamey. Uh, it's obviously fully electric uh, to the point where the car can steer itself. Um, but it's it's okay it's okay the st you don't you don't buy a Tesla for steering feel and it's uh, it's fine it's good for a daily driven car um, go we're gonna go down this little canyon here and then we're gonna turn on to uh, to PCH can you I don't know if you guys can hear that when I go over these little bumps there there's actually rattles in in the car and this thing is brand new it's got like 3,000 miles on it not a prepped press car, mind you. It's just a retail sale. Uh, and I don't want to follow this guy. Well, I've timed badly. Give me a second. Okay. <clears throat> I will say that driving an electric vehicle around LA is a wonderfully relaxing experience. I, I really do love that. Not can you hear my stuff sliding around in the back? That means we have grip. That's good. Really tight. 180 hairpin. Good turning radius from the uh, from the Model X. Actually, it's good for uh, for pulling into parking spaces and has really good parking sensors and cameras and stuff like that. It's very easy to park. What I love about this as we go downhill, I have my regenerative braking set to high, so I really don't have to use the actual brakes all that much, except for these tight corners here, and uh, and I can be recharging my battery as gravity pulls me down the hill. Oh, there's my Yeti cup. Sorry about that. And, oh, by the way, uh, it's really quick. It's, it's quick enough that on a tight road like this, if you're not careful, you could probably overdrive the brakes without much trouble. Look at that view, though. That's spectacular. And I've moved this camera here 
uh, to try and accentuate my absolute favorite feature of the Model X, which is this windshield. It's about an acre and a half huge, and it probably costs about as much as an acre and a half in a flyover state. But damn, I mean, it's, it's almost as if you're driving a car without a windshield at all, because it just goes all the way up. And when you drive through the city at night, or under a beautiful sky, or even here, look at this ocean view we've got going on. I mean, it's magnificent. I like, I do like how the Model X drives, like, a lot. It drives really, really good. It's got the right, you know, it's got the right amount of torque for the city. There's no hole in traffic that is too small for the Model X. And we've caught this Range Rover again. That's okay, because we're at the bottom of the hill. We're going to go down to PCH, and I'm going to do some uh, autopiloting. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That corner was really hard for you, wasn't it? Um, these seats are uh, a little more comfortable, I think, than the last the Model S I drove, although, perfectly honest, that, that could be in my head. They might be exactly the same seats, but maybe just a little more room, a little higher up, and, uh, and it, feels, it feels comfy, although not a ton of adjustments, just your basic stuff and heated and cooled. All right, I'm gonna wait till this light turns green, then we're gonna go out on a PCH, and, uh, and I'm gonna let the Model X do some driving. We're gonna go out on a PCH. I, in the Model S, I tested autopilot in the canyons, and it, it didn't really like the tight stuff. It was more uh, more happy in the open stuff, but here on PCH, it works really good. So it's easy to set. You just pull the trigger twice next to the steering wheel, and now we are autopiloting. Um, autopilot as a term is a bit of a misnomer in the vernacular, in that the technical definition of the word autopilot, uh, which Alex Roy wrote a great editorial about, uh, is an assistance device for pilots. Like, I use autopilot on boats a lot, and basically you just set a heading and the boat will keep that heading. That doesn't mean it will avoid stuff. You gotta do that yourself. And uh, an autopilot has such a cool name that and it, it implies, like, the thing from the movie Airplane that inflates. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't do everything for you. It's just a very, very advanced cruise control system, basically. So here on PCH, um, the display is really seeing the cars around me doing well. It's reading the road well. This type of road is great for autopilot. Really well-defined markings. The traffic's all kind of flowing together in a nice way. And so I could go all the way 25 miles back to my house uh, that's Cher's house, by the way. I can go all the way down PCH uh, on autopilot, and it really wouldn't be much of a problem, although it gives you a little flash. It wants me to hold the steering wheel for a second. So it, it comes and goes, but but it's fine. The, the Actually, the hardest part about autopilot is see, I had a disengagement there because uh, it detected the chain, the curb moved and stuff like that. The hardest part about autopilot, and now we're back on, is being ready. Like, it's actually harder to be ready to take over than it is just to steer. Um, whereas, you know, the the, uh, the radar cruise control portion of it that controls the speed and the distance is excellent in pretty much all the high-end cars. It's when it comes to the steering. And, uh, and you can use uh, just the cruise control and steer yourself, or you can let it do it. You see it's sort of, it's sort of uh, bumper bowling a little bit between the lanes but it's doing a pretty decent job up here on PCH. This is, you know, when it, when it comes to just cruising, these Teslas are amazing because they're very quiet in here, they're refined, they're effortless, and they give you this sort of cocoon-like vault that takes you away from traffic and that takes you away from the noises and the smells of the outside world in Los Angeles. Um, I, I like the Model X. It's like we have to give Tesla a lot of credit. I mean, this is their their second ever real production car. The Roadster doesn't count. And and uh, can we go? There we go. And uh, for a for their second ever production car, this thing is incredible. I mean, they've they've figured out so much cool stuff, but they've really they've really bit off a lot. Maybe a little more than they can chew with the the kitschy doors, like, I, I just, I don't get the doors, like, in a DeLorean, I get it, in a 300 SL Gullwing, I get it, but when the car is already this tall, why do you need your doors to be so much taller, and it's like, the, the engineering behind that mechanism and the sensors, 
it's like a great idea and it really seems like it would make a lot of sense but in the real world it just kind of doesn't um, which is which is disappointing and and there's if they really stepped it up to make the uh, uh, the, the, the fit and finish just exceptional that would be something because this is a hundred and forty thousand dollar car and I've heard people go well you don't buy a Tesla for build quality listen to me for a hundred and forty thousand dollars everything counts like they say it's singer everything is important okay so if the door handle doesn't line up perfectly on my Model X I don't really care if it has this great cruise control system because that will bug me and it will not ever stop bugging me it, it just won't and so that ugh, drives me crazy but this thing is really really cool Anyone who says they want one or they've bought one and they love it, I get that. People have different priorities for me. I don't need everyone to be think how I think. And if you want your car to be as spaceship-like as possible, this is as spaceship-like as a car gets. And and I don't I don't blame anyone for liking something like that. I think we've about covered the Model X. Oh, what's cool is if I if I use the blinker here with autopilot it will actually check it and change lanes for me which is that's something unique to tesla the mercedes uh the self-drive uh system drive assist whatever they call it that one doesn't do that this one uh this one does it and does it pretty well i would say so i'm gonna bail right here and we're gonna end this video because i think that is pretty sufficient for the model x um it's a really, really cool car. I, I'd be interested to see what the long-term reliability is of the doors and all the weird gadgets and stuff in here. But as something that makes your daily commuting life very pleasant, I would say that this and the Model S are about as pleasant a place to spend your traffic-filled mornings and nights, uh, you know, as, as anything. It's, it's, it's lovely. Um, so thank you to Turo for hooking it up. No quid pro quo, they just got me the car. Thank you to the owner, Darren, for, uh, for being a fan of the show and, and uh, taking, getting this thing nice and clean for me. Thank you guys for watching, and, uh, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.